Hello everybody, welcome back to Sloth and Door Kids. My name is Alisa. This is the new week again. I haven't done this weekly vlog for a while. So as you can see, the winter's is approaching. The big sweater is on, the big ugly cardigan is ready <laughs> to come on. And um, yeah, it's getting cold. And that can mean only one thing. That means that I'm cutting out my Vicky Sells trench coats. As you know, at the moment there is um, the marathon of sewing Le Leonor, Eleanor, Leonor, Vicky Sells trench coat is going on. So I signed up um, and got my pattern and I had it printed through pattern to paper. Who are brilliant anyway and I had my fabric for years for a couple of years now I got it from Togo Mills and it's a gray cotton twill which you will see in a minute okay guys just wanted to show you that this is only two-thirds <laughs> of the trench that I've laid out you see the fabric hanging off the chair there at the end and all the pieces that I'm yet have to pin I'm just kind of positioning them according to this plan here okay so there we go that's what um, we're working on me and Julie I'm doing the um, details and and lovely Julie coffee, time. coffee is we having a coffee break so we're about to sit down and have a little chatter and then carry on Julie has been a great helper to me yesterday and today. <laughs> so, I spent about six hours this morning cutting out all my pieces out of what seemed like a 325 miles of continuous piece of fabric covered with a small, tiny hundreds of details pinned to it <laughs> that are required to make this trench coat anyway it's all done now honestly I thought I'd never finish I've cut out the lining the only small tiny task that is left to do is for me to cut out half of those pieces in interfacing now and only just apply the interfacing to them and then and then I'm gonna be ready to sew so there you go let me just show you the trench coat fabric and my lining just hold on there for a sec. Just just stay there. Just hold on. Okay, so I'm going to show you just a little off cuts. This is my grey twill. Um, it's just like a light grey colour. It's quite... It's not stiff. It's still soft, but it's quite... Proper medium weight fabric you know so you can see how nice and substantial it is and then the lining is something I've ordered from a Vicky Sews fabrics <laughs> and one side is like this but then the other side is like this how gorgeous is that well obviously I was gonna use it on the gray side but after a long consideration that was about uh, three seconds long um, me and Julie who was advising me on this project and still is we've decided to go for this pinkish side side and also I've decided to go because this project will have piping so I didn't want to go for black because that would have been too I should I need to stop doing that um, because that would have been too light and black a bit too like a gray grayish scale i've decided to add a little bit of color with uh, burgundy piping which is currently in the post so hopefully should be there tomorrow i had also ordered a piping machine sewing machine front <laughs> so once i've bought all this that's it i can just start sewing but at the moment i'm going to concentrate on applying my interfacing and doing the other three projects that I cut out yesterday that are made of 
stretchy fabric so they should be quite fast and I will tell you what they are when we go upstairs in a minute and I'm going to show you in detail what those projects are and I hope you're excited you're excited as I am because I finally got a couple of days of work and I'm so excited to get my hands on sewing and cutting and measuring and all that boring stuff that I usually find boring but I'm so excited because it's something hands-on and I love it <laughs> so come with me upstairs and I will show you what other things I'm gonna be doing just to show you all the work I've completed today so these are the bits of the trench that don't need interfacing these are the bits of the lining that I put away for when I, I'm going to use them. And these are the bits that need interfacing and additional markings, such as darts, um, pocket placings, buttonhole placings and stuff like that. This is the interfacing in question. This is the dress that I cut out. This is the new collection. You should have it available as of today now. Today, what is it today? Tuesday. So this is now available in English. It's gorgeous. I cut it out of this really odd fabric. Uh, it's got some sort of like a snake skin coating and it's also stretch. So um, anyway, I make it you'll see it <laughs> and um, this is a set that I'm gonna make it's the um, lounge sweats sweats and a hoodie and I made them out of well I didn't make them I'm making them out of this fabric which featured in my second or third episode I think I was talking about it. I think this is from stop and still if I remember correctly and this is an organic cotton cotton jersey quite thin so these are my ongoing projects so I've got, literally got one two three and four cut out to be sewn up so this is what I'm going to be doing for the next three years <laughs> with my schedule so wish me luck hopefully I'll be able to show you this first because I'm hoping to wear it this weekend to a dinner with friends I thought I'd give you a quick update on the progress of my Leora dress. Just a quick close up to show you what it's supposed to be like on top. Now keep in mind that this dress has no sleeves as yet. Um, so this is my gathered top of a bodice. Um, and then the loose threads and this is my neck loop which I actually think I can pull all the way through and just make it into a v-neck and make this part disappear so it's just going to be like a clean open neck and then I can either wear it like this to create a little um, skin um, gap or I can just pull it down and have a more respectable way <laughs> of wearing it. Um, mind you, this is supposed to be stretching on a body, so it's not going to be hanging like this um, when there's a three-dimensional body inside. It should be looking quite all right. Let me just step away slightly further just to show you. This is it. The sleeves are ready to go in very soon. And um, yeah, this is what it looks like. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. Now, um, I tried it on with my boyfriend and apparently it's too dressy for the Saturday. So I don't even know if I'm going to be wearing it on Saturday. But it's definitely going to be ready by then because this project came together so, 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 so quickly. Um, I'll tell you more about the construction process and show you the insides when it's done. And I model it for you, um, hopefully by the end of this video. But if not, next one the latest. So stay tuned. And another thing that I wanted to show you is this um, bias binding that I've received. So um, I told you that I went for burgundy um, because I have burgundy and pink in my lining. So I've just pinned it to, to show you what it would look, will, will look like on the finished seam. And I think it's pretty cool. Then in my stash, I found these buttons. 
Hello. Do you know what I mean? Free buttons. Look at this. I think they're pretty cool. Now, the only problem is, it's not the problem, but I'm struggling to find a um, buckle because, um, let me just grab, hold on. Right, if you look at the skirts, there's two tall buckles on each of the um, sleeves here. So I've got the buttons, I've got all the lining, I just need the buckles. And I'm struggling to find a buckle in this colour. I don't know what to do. Um, I'm really definitely, definitely keeping this colour. I'm keeping the um, burgundy. Um for the accents so i don't know uh, maybe i'll pop into exeter fabrics tomorrow on my lunch um and maybe even i'd have to go into um trego mills to check if they have any because i'm determined to make all my accents in this beautiful burgundy color because look how gorgeous it goes with this light gray i'm in love i can't wait to start making it i'm just waiting for my piping food now Happy Sunday, the week is over, my sewing has been quite happening this week, so on my way from work I popped into fabrics on a Friday and I had um, three things on my list, okay, I had um, two burgundy or grey buckles, which they didn't have, I have um, top stitching and buttonhole thread in light grey for my trench coat. Again, they didn't have that. Then the third thing I had clear elastic. I wanted to get 10 meters of clear elastic because I use quite a lot of it putting it into shoulder seams and neckline seams and like along the pocket lines on a stretchy fabric. Again, they didn't have this. And then I've realized that I forgot to put one thing on my list. And when I saw it in the shop, it hit me. I was like, oh, yes. And that thing was this fabric. <laughs> okay. In my defense, this was the last bit they had in the shop. And the moment I saw the color, I just absolutely fell in love with it. It's just the tastiest color. You know how I love my lilac? This is just like a lilac on steroids, you know? <laughs> yeah. um, I had to have it. And this was the last they had on a bolt. It was just, just over two meters. And I'm thinking of making either another pair of Jacqueline trousers um, from Vicky Sews or, oh, it escapes me, another pair of trousers that they had just released, Vicky Sews, and it's the one with a, like a straight leg, a slightly flared at the bottom, and it has a slit. So that um, slit at the bottom of each leg, so that when you wear nice shoes, or any shoes really, it kind of peeks through, and it's quite long, they're quite long. So we will have to see, I'll have to pre-wash it, I'll have to play around with all my pattern pieces and see what fits. Um, Jacqueline trousers would be amazing because I've made them already, I know what I'm doing. Um, but then, you know what, any, any pattern of Vicky Sews is just quite easy to make anyway. So with this fabric, I obviously bought a zipper. It's not exactly the match, but it's close enough because it's going to be hidden anyway. And I got myself, um, just a matching thread. So that was, um, I would call it a successful trip. <laughs> I'm still looking for my burgundy buckles and I am not budging. I am not going for a different color of piping or buttons. I'm staying with that and I will find them. I literally spent this whole week online um, trying to find the burgundy buckles and nobody seems to have them. So I have finished my Leora dress and it is absolutely stunning. Um, I am very impressed with the fit i'm impressed with uh, the way it's been drafted and the design um this middle bit you have a string going all the way through gathering in on the top front um so you can either bring this up this gathering bit and show a little bit of skin so when it opens obviously when you put it on it's going to look a bit more 
figure hugging, not like, <laughs> not like saggy. But um, you can do that or you can close it down and wear it like this. It's more modest. You can pull this string all the way down so that you have an open neck and you have just slightly longer ties at the bottom. Construction wise, um, it was very straightforward, very quick make. Um, the only kind of um, effort that was required to make this dress was to turn out this very long, um, very thin string. And in fact, I need to secure these ends, um, these little butts, because they're a bit unfinished. But um, once I've done that, um, it just came together so quickly. And finishing wise, I've done the overlocking all the raw edges. And then I zigzag stitched it on the right side, which gives it a little bit of that stretch, um, especially at the bottom because you need to have that much of a space for when you're walking and sitting and you know moving around so um, that's no worry there's plenty of um, plenty of space to do that then um, on the inside I have secured the front slit um, partially with self-made black stretch like cotton jersey bias binding strip then I smartened up and then I used um, for the rest of the dress like the neckline um, is the clear the clear elastic that I was after from the extra fabric shop so I sat it out now I'm just going to use clear elastic from now on and it's just so quick it's quite possible that I will be making a couple of more. I think this Leora pattern can become my new Sirocco jumpsuit in terms of how many of them I am going to be making. And yes, it has been already said in this household that this is my new Sirocco jumpsuit, <laughs> this pattern. And I have a couple of other patterns that um, I will be making which are close fitting like a Demi uh, lengths, long sleeves, you know, long dresses for the winter um, because you, you they're quick to make. You can make them out of whole variety of fabrics and you have yourself a full wardrobe full of beautiful um, winter, nice and warm and pleasant to skin dresses that you can make out of cotton jersey and wool jersey and stuff like that. So... Um, for the moment, that's all my news. That's my week gone. Um, I've had one garment complete, which I'm very happy about. So that's more, more than I can say about some of the previous weeks. I still have my Lillian waistcoat outstanding. It's pretty much done. It just needs the buttonholes and buttons put in. So that's been sitting on my um, dress form waiting for me to remember to do that <laughs> so I'll be doing that next week um, yeah so that's pretty much me I hope you enjoyed this episode and stay tuned for the development with my trench coat which is going to be the most complicated garment I've ever made in my entire life so I'm quite excited about it I'm not intimidated I'm just very excited and I just need, I know I need to be patient so stay tuned and I'll see you guys in my next video Meanwhile, be good.